Now, for more on this, I'm joined by Rami Jara, who's an independent Syrian journalist and activist. Rami, uh, thank you very much for your time. Good to see you. So all sides then are criticised in this report. What's your reaction to it? Uh, the thing is, I don't want to put down the efforts of those that help put together this report. In this case, it's Human Rights Watch. Uh, but we've seen similar reports like this from the UN. And this in particular report is an interview with 621 people that have left the country uh, and given their vision of what they saw or what happened. And that might represent the methods used and the parties committing those crimes. But that doesn't represent the numbers and percentages of which parties have committed in, in terms of number. Some, a, a very important point, uh, there is documented evidence that over 180,000 civilians have been killed by the government forces, Assad's forces. And um, ISIS, groups like ISIS, only represent 1% of those killings, so we're talking about 1,800 that ISIS are responsible for. Those numbers show you that the main source of this violence is coming from the Syrian regime. Any other form of violence is in reaction to that violence and is an excuse to that action. I, we obviously do not agree with any form of violence. So for example, the Al-Nusra group, which is mentioned in this report, they're responsible for quite a few deaths, but they are a sample in society that people have accepted because they have no alternative. They're asked, asked to be either with ISIS or the government, and that's an unacceptable choice. Let's talk about what's happening on the ground in Syria right now, particularly in Aleppo. And um, we've seen tens of thousands of people leave in the last week or so, yes. uh, many of them heading to the, uh, the Turkey border. Yes. What's the situation like in Aleppo for those who remain? The government is trying to perform a total siege, uh, and that's also being portrayed in the media. Now the government has almost imposed this whole siege over Aleppo, when that is in fact not true. Uh, half of Aleppo is under siege by the government and the other half is under siege by ISIS forces. This is something that the government and the Russians are trying to prevent the media from talking about. Inside the city now, there is almost one way out of Aleppo. Uh, and that's not towards the Turkish border, that route's been cut off, now it's towards another city called Idlib. So in the centre of the city what we're seeing now is an escalation in attacks by Russian and government forces on central markets, areas in the centre of the city, trying to force them out into this other city to then perform this total siege, which we'd seen happen in other parts of the country, like Mudaya, like central Damascus, um, sorry, I mean the uh, suburbs of Damascus, and it's to pull people into submission over, over the demands of the government. And what happens then if Aleppo is recaptured? by the regime? I don't think the aim is to recapture Aleppo. I think that it's very obvious that the government has allowed ISIS to expand over these few years, and they want ISIS to expand into Aleppo, because in this case, it would mean that this is no longer a problem just for the government forces, just for Russia. It would mean that 12 other countries, part of that coalition against ISIS, would also start attacking Aleppo. They're trying to destroy the moderate opposition. This is what the strategy is here. Okay, Rami, thank you very much for your, uh, your time and thank you for your insight. Thank you.